Hey guys, I'm Tyler and welcome back. Today I'm with my buddy, Dr. Nick Zorowski, and I built him a Live Edge Cherry Slab desk that I had to do a lot of work on to actually make it work. So this desk is a Live Edge Cherry Slab and the base of it is made out of black galvanized steel pipe. All of this is made out of stuff you can get from Home Depot, obviously minus the slab. I did add a little bit of welding to stiffen the whole thing, but you can definitely skip that step. Like I said before, this desk was built for my buddy, Dr. Nick Zorowski. You can check out his YouTube channel at Dr. Nick Zorowski. Link in the description down below. These pieces of cherry actually started as 23 inch wide pieces of a live edge slab. And I used a local source to try to joint them down in one solid piece, but unfortunately there was too much twist, so we had to cut them in half so we didn't lose too much of the thickness of the slab. I wanted to use this local source so that I would cut down on the massive disaster that flattening with a router jig does in my shop because I only have a 6 inch jointer and cannot get one half of these slabs flat before flattening the other side with a planer. I suppose I could have made a massive planer sled to be able to flatten the first side of these slabs, but it was just easier to use the local source and it was done in about 20 minutes. And they have a drum sander on site, which I don't have, and this saved an incredible amount of time of hand sanding. We started with 80 grit and worked our way up to 120. Ended up a little thinner than we were after because there was a good twist. But we're in the truck ready to go home. Once back in the shop and the slabs had a little bit of time to acclimate to the environment, the first visit was to the jointer where I jointed one edge so we can get a nice straight glue line. Then I lined up the slabs in a beautiful book match pattern and marked out where I wanted to do my loose mortise and tenon joints. And then using my homemade domino or checker as you guys have called it, I cut those loose mortises. and the glue up is relatively straightforward. A liberal amount of tight bond to glue in the mortises and on the flat sides of the slab. Made sure I had coverage everywhere and then lots of clamps. Who's there? It was me. And here I am using opposing pressure of the clamps to make sure everything is perfectly flat. Once the glue had set up, it was time to lay out the desk to its final dimensions. I measured from the flat known side of my assembly bench to the glue line, which we know is square, to be able to square up the ends of the slab, which I did with my DIY track and cordless circular saw. This video is sponsored by Sawblade.com. Visit their website for a full line of woodworking and metalworking blades and machinery. This is going to be a live edge slab, but you want to get that bark off there, otherwise it will come off at some point in time unless you epoxy it on, which is an option, but I used a hammer and chisel to get all that bark off. It turns out this slab was quite tricky to work with, and one of the reasons was as I was planning it there were some inclusions that appeared in the wood that I actually had to dig out and decided to fill with a river of epoxy. To stabilize some of the cracks in the slab and to fill some of the bigger tear outs, I used some walnut bow ties. To lay out the proper sizes, I cut out a template from paper so that I could visualize the sizes of the bow ties that I wanted and then use those paper templates to make the cutouts for the walnut bow ties. The bandsaw works great for cutting those bow ties to the rough dimension. Once the bow ties are to their rough dimension, 
I finesse them into the proper shape nice and smooth with a sharp chisel. And once the bow ties are in their final shape, use a nice sharp edge and the bow tie itself to lay out where you want it in your final workpiece. I use my cordless trim router with a straight fluted flat bottom bit to hog out most of the material and then back to the chisel again to finesse it to its final inlay dimension. A liberal amount of wood glue making sure I covered all the surface areas and the bow ties fit like a glove. Once the bow ties have been given sufficient time to dry, I plane them down close to the surface of the desk itself using a mini block plane and then hit it with the sander. And at this point, the slab is ready to be finished, so I went from 80 grit all the way up to 180 grit. So at this point, the slab is done being prepared, so it's time to move it inside to do the epoxy work since I did not want to keep the shop as warm as necessary in the winter here in Michigan. To fill the areas of the open crotch and the areas that I needed to carve out to get rid of the inclusions, I'm actually going to be using this blue fish tank rock, super cheap to get at your local pet supply store or just at a bigger grocery store chain, making sure everything is nice and flat after getting the rock in place so that none of the rocks protrude over the top coat of epoxy. And now it is time to mix up the first batch of epoxy and this is simply going to be used to fill in the air gaps between the rocks to minimize bubbles during later coats. I'm using a tabletop epoxy, you can get this at Amazon and a bunch of different places, link in the description down below. Like I said, this first batch was just to fill the rock area so that I didn't have bubbles trying to creep up later on in the pores. Once that first coat of epoxy had cleared, I made sure the table was as level as I could possibly get it and then poured a thin skim coat or seal coat of epoxy to cover the entire area to minimize bubbles for the final flood coat. This skim coat I made sure to get all the surface areas and all of the edges using a brush. You don't need to worry about drips because you can sand them off later on after it cures. The final flood coat of epoxy was the same process, just much thicker. Once the epoxy had been given a good 24 hours to cure, I took it outside, flipped it upside down and sanded off those drips on the bottom of the slab, sanded the bottom of the slab, and then sealed the bottom of the slab using General Finish's Armor Seal, two coats. Now moving on to the base of this desk. As you saw in the thumbnail, the base is made out of black, three quarter inch galvanized pipe. I did a little bit of research to figure out the best way to clean this and I found the best video from Ben Ueda from Homemade Modern. I started with scraping off the UPC numbers and stickers and then using some goo gun to get that adhesive off, a rub down with a acetone rag to help break down that black covering that they put on there to prevent rust, and then rub off most of that black covering using some stand wall, and then a nice cleanup with another rag of acetone. So this is one fully assembled leg. Obviously we need to get another, which is just a bunch of three quarter inch parts. I first assembled everything just finger tightening it together and then once I had a little bit more leverage I used the leg itself to tighten everything down and then a pipe wrench for the pieces where I could not use the extended leverage of the pipes.
After making sure this laptop was on the base nice and evenly, I attached it with one and a quarter inch coarse pocket hole screws through the flange of the black galvanized pipe. To seal the pipe and prevent any rusting, I'm using a light coat of Johnson's paste wax. And delivery to my buddy Dr. Nick Zarowski, it fit in his home office perfectly, although it did take a little bit of finagling. This was kind of by accident, but the natural curve of the slab and the side I chose to be out allowed the desk to curve around his window perfectly. Doesn't get better than that. You'll see here I did add some diagonal supports which I welded on there. Not necessary, just makes the desk a little bit more rigid. Well, there you are, guys. I hope you enjoyed this build. If you did, please hammer that thumbs up button. Helps us out a ton. And make sure you subscribe so you never miss when we upload a new video. I'm DIY Tyler, and you guys have a good one.